So I'm not really sure how we're going to get exactly to where I want to get to in this conversation, but I figured let's just start talking and see where we end up. I want to talk about the future of gaming, the future of MMORPGs, things like that, the double-edged sword of what to expect going forward with things like cryptocurrency coming into play, things like Unreal Engine 5, and networking solutions that just make things considerably easier to make a competent game for a smaller studio of people. Now, I've covered crowdfunding and crowdfunded games on my channel for like two years, ever since I started a YouTube channel, because I truly believe that for us to really shake things up, for us to get the innovative experiences, for us to get something truly unique and new, it's not going to come from the big boys. They've made it pretty clear now. I've seen the decade of WoW clones, the decade of, of games that are just World of Warcraft in a slightly different skin with maybe a couple of different aspects to it. And I don't think they're going to deliver on what we want. Uh, and I say we, I mean me specifically. And I've also seen the Assassin's Creed 75. I've seen, you know, the, the new open world skin on what is essentially the same exact experience. And then I've also played indie games as a primary source of enjoyment for ever since Steam Early Access has been a thing. And I really think that I've had more enjoyment from even, you know, the poor games on there, things like DayZ, that took way too long to really do what they wanted to do. But even while being a buggy mess, were just enjoyable experiences because they were doing something different. And we've seen a lot of innovative ideas come from that. The Battle Royale genre, things like that, came from no money, came from no real game development experience, and then took over and became the next big thing. We've seen things like Valheim from a small studio come out and just do exactly what it said on the tin. Valheim just it just worked and that was why it sold millions of copies in a very short amount of time and it just goes to show that people are looking for these experiences looking for something that just competently does what it says it's going to do and it doesn't bullshit you it doesn't it doesn't have so many microtransactions and things like that now what i believe we're going to see going forward is the double-edged sword we're going to see more competent games being made by smaller studios by smaller numbers of people with lesser backing because the tools are getting much better. Unreal Engine 5 looks fantastic and pre-made assets look fantastic. And we're going to be seeing people use them in a really cool way. And they're going to make games for less money and they're going to make really fun, interesting new experiences. But what we're also going to see is bad faith actors coming in and they're going to scam people and they're going to use these new tools to make their scams look better than ever and we're already sort of seeing that with Unreal Engine 4 and how easy it is to throw together something that is just pre-rendered footage. Somebody with very little experience can go in there, put something together and take a bunch of money from people. And then when you factor in cryptocurrencies now coming into the gaming space in a major way, people might be turning a blind eye to it. People might not be looking into it. There's channels like mine, um, Sid Alpha, Big Fry, Upper Echelon, uh, Josh Trifes, people like that, Callum. Callum Upton looking into projects like this. Nobody's really dived too deep so far on the cryptocurrency sphere. And this is one that's going to get really, really bad real soon. And it's going to be on a scale like nothing we've ever seen before. We talk about things like uh, Star Citizen. I'm not calling it a scam, by the way, before the Star Citizen fanboys get upset. We talk about games that are the biggest ones we've seen in crowdfunding that have still not released it's it's a problem um uh, whether or not you're a fan of the game or not it's a problem that that game hasn't released and it's so over budget and it's so bloated and it's just you know it's just there and maybe it's going to release is it ever going to be the experience people paid for we'll have to wait and see but we look at things like chronicles of valeria a game that raised eight point something million dollars and people consider that a big old scam and then you look at things like cryptocurrency games that you've never even heard of that are raising hundreds of millions of dollars overnight, over a couple of weeks, over a couple of months, billion dollar market caps. And these games look absolutely goofy. They look garbage. And the problem is they're only going to get bigger. People have seen the boom of cryptocurrency. They've seen uh, Bitcoin go from nothing to being worth tens of thousands of dollars each. And they want to be in on that. They don't care about the video game. They don't care about what it could potentially be what they care about is being speculative and and basically pumping something up and lying about it and astroturfing and you know the moon boys oh this is a safe moon this is going to the moon guys the dogecoin the memes this is going to infect gaming like nothing you've ever seen before it's coming 
And the thing is, is when you look at some of these projects, let's just give you some examples of what we're looking at right now that's raising millions of dollars, billions of dollars. And these are just two examples. Here, what you've got, let me just turn this off because this is not required. We're not on Twitch. This is Mist NFT. Now, this is a game that will potentially eventually be a game. But if you look at this, if you look at the gameplay shown here, there is no gameplay. This is literally just a, a pre-rendered game using completely store assets. And their only selling point is essentially, we might eventually have a game, give us money now, and we might make one. And I've seen some things about the competence of these developers and how they act. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's not a good look, and this is not looking real good. Now, just to show you what I'm talking about, these are the asset packs that they're using, these polygon assets that you see in a lot of Unity games nowadays. Uh, and so for somebody to basically just log on, buy some Unity assets, and then just say, hey guys, here's a crypto game, and people are just like, here you go, here's millions of dollars, here's millions of dollars towards this game. Uh, at one point, the market cap was $20 million, and it's now down to one point something million dollars. Um, the speculative nature of cryptocurrency coming in, and this game, by the way, anyone that knows games, anyone that's been following games, knows that this is pre-made assets and there is no gameplay shown. It's just a trailer put together to raise money. They've not even really given any kind of clear indication of what the game is going to eventually be, if it ever turns into one. And people have thrown millions of dollars at this. And for it to get up to $20 million eventually, that means a lot of people have lost a lot of money. And then you start looking at things like Decentraland. Now, if you look at this game, uh, this game has raised billions of dollars. This game currently has a market cap of $1 billion. And it had a market cap at the height of crypto a couple of months ago of two point something billion dollars. And while I'm not saying this is a scam, I'm not saying Mist is a scam. I'm saying that these games look like terrible games. They look like really, really poor experiences so far. They look like they've not really got a lot of anything. It's just a, it's just a, a lot of nothing. But people are speculating to the point of, here's billions of dollars. Here's $2 billion to make this game. And again, they're not doing it because they think the game's going to be amazing. Most people are in this to make money, and that's it. And when you bring that in, the human nature, the element of greed, um, and to get other people in, to bring them in, and that's how you offload your money, uh, that's how you make more money, is to convince people that this is the greatest thing ever. It makes something almost, in essence, like a pyramid scheme, but socially engineered as one, without the company actually being at fault or doing anything wrong. And that's a problem. That's something we're going to see a lot of. And bear in mind, what I'm talking about here is games that look like this. Now, what happens when a game comes out that looks like this? When a crypto project appears that looks like Unreal Engine 5 uh, in their showcase trailer, that looks like the gameplay is, is like this? We're going to be seeing this. We're already seeing people put together trailers and gameplay experiences that are very short that look amazing uh, in Unreal Engine 5. And as these tools get better and better, not only are the projects that we get from smaller companies going to get better, the companies that we get from people trying to steal your money is going to get better. And it's not always going to be that they're going to pull the rug from under people and, you know, the house of cards is going to come tumbling down and everyone's going to lose their money and then they're all going to be able to point the finger and say, you exit scam, you stole everybody's money. What a lot of times is going to happen is going to be much more nuanced. What they're going to do is they're going to say, we can do all these amazing things. Just give us money, give us time. And they're going to spend years doing it and deliver on almost nothing. Or they're going to deliver an experience that is considerably worse than what they sold you on. But they're going to pay themselves a, a handsome salary for doing so. They're going to build a life. They're going to build a career based on lying to people. And whether or not they are intentionally lying or not, to me, doesn't make that much of a difference if the end result is identical. Maybe some of these games, some of these companies coming out will deliver something, but they're not going to be delivering something commensurate to what you paid them for and for what they've sold you on. We've seen it time and time again. Companies that have a realistic idea of what they want to do, take, for instance, Titan Reach, a game that showed up on Kickstarter and said, 
we're, we have all pre-made assets. We have a small team. This is what we've got so far. Here's a demo. You can log in and play it now. We want a couple hundred thousand dollars and we'll be able to deliver you experience an experience that's like RuneScape, but in an updated engine, but still focuses on that old school aspect of RuneScape and not RuneScape 3. And they couldn't get funded. Um, and then you have games like Chronicles of Valyria that come out and say, we're going to give you the best game ever. You're going to be able to live. You're going to be able to die. You're going to be able to own land. Land's going to change hands. You're going to be able to do this and that and that. Every Everything in the world's going to be interactable. You're going to be able to pick objects up, put objects down. It's going to be crazy. Never seen, never seen before in the MMO genre. Never seen before in a game on that scale. And we're going to do all of that for seven hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars $900,000. And people looked at that and said, wow, this is a dream come true. And it was a dream because it was never realistic and that's why the game never materialized and this is what we're going to be seeing going forward if people are funding games like decentraland for billions of dollars if people are funding things like mist for 20 million dollars at the peak what are we going to be seeing in terms of market cap and how much money is going to be put into games once we see actual competently made trailers and ideas from people that may not have the competence to deliver on what they're talking about, but now have the tools to at least make it look like they can. I think gaming is going to be going through a real rough patch in the next couple of years, specifically when these two worlds collide. We're already seeing it with things like Earth 2 and Planet 9 and all these other projects that I've not even begun to look into yet that are selling pieces of the moon, that are selling pieces of Mars. Uh, it just... I don't really know what we're going to be doing about this. There's not enough time in the day to keep up on all these projects and to warn people that these things are going on. And the issue is with a lot of these, especially in the cryptocurrency space, is that they weaponize their audience. They weaponize the investors of these projects because they stand to directly benefit. It's not just the company that's benefiting. They're offloading the, the aspect of them making all the money on we're not making all the money you guys are making some of the money too. Greed is a real powerful motivator. And I honestly, it worries me for, for what I'm going to be covering in the next couple of years and what we're going to be seeing. And I don't think the law is going to step in here. I don't think there's going to be any regulations come in to stop these people doing these things. Cryptocurrency has been around now for quite a few years and there's still exit scams going on. There's still projects popping up that are saying, we can do this thing and they absolutely can't. And they're taking in hundreds of millions of dollars for nothing we're going to be seeing it in gaming real soon we're already seeing it and we need to start digging into some of these projects as well but i just want to talk about the double-edged sword of the tools that we're getting from gaming um from things like unreal engine 5 the better assets being made the networking tools being presented by things like amazon and stuff like that microsoft and yeah things are going to get rough guys so Hopefully you enjoyed the video and the perspective. Leave a like on the video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think, what you think we're going to be experiencing over the next couple of years. And yeah, subscribe if you enjoy the content. Check me out on the links in the video description. Twitch, where I play games, talk about topics like this all the time. Discord, if you want to come join the conversation. Patreon, if you want to throw a few coins to your MMO Watcher. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Appreciate you all. Stay safe out there. We're out. Peace.